Let's go, guys. Hold on, let's go. Hey, gentlemen, there's a world championship fight. We both know the rules have been thoroughly gone over. I want you to remember two things. I want you to obey my commands, but most importantly, defend yourselves at all times. Now shake hands and come out of the belt. A contender used to be somebody in prize fighting. Can Alfonso Gomez make a modern contender somebody again? Round one begins and Miguel Cotto steps out and throws three or four fast punches as if he wants to start fast. Cotto so confident in his jab now after what he accomplished in two fights last year. Good left hook to the cheek of Alfonso Gomez early. Now Gomez gets off a right hand partially blocked by Cotto who's become very deft at blocking shots upstairs with his gloves. A little bit unusually confident, a little bit arrogant and cocky even in this fight, the way it's starting off. And he's throwing a lot of big bombs off the bat, which he normally doesn't do. Well, he says that mentally, Emmanuel, beating Shane Mosley has taken him to another level. Has given him a deeper confidence based on his understanding that he can beat anybody. If he can beat somebody like Mosley, he can beat two superstars of the sport. Well, he showed a lot of different skills in fighting Mosley. He showed he actually was out boxing change with surpassed with his jab. And even when he was in trouble about the ninth or tenth round, he moved around, worked himself out of trouble, and got back into the fight at the end. So it was probably very well hockey. He had so many career-defining da uh, uh, dangerous moments that he's had, having been knocked down and hurt so much. But that was the one. He's already put a lot of leather on Alfonso Gomez in the first round. And Gomez's face has reddened in the middle on the nose and above the nose from the accuracy of Cotto's early assault. Cotto is surprisingly quick with the straight right hand. And one of his advantages there is he throws that shot straight down the middle. There's no loop in Miguel Cotto's right hand. No, he's a good puncher. He does a variety of things. Body punches, head punches, jab, right, everything. But his jab is seeming to be the most effective punch so far as the fight is moving on. The most noticeable thing is that Cotto is quicker with his hands. He's beating Gomez to the punch more often than not. And that is often the difference in the levels of the game. The quickness of the fighters. Gomez has been very confident leading up to the fight. Stressing that after what he went through on the contender and having beaten Gaddy here and having beaten Bentaki. He doesn't feel as though there's any reason for him to worry against any opponent. And there's a good left hand by Gomez that momentarily stops Cotto in mid-combination. Even though Cotto has thought of a ride to punch, the only punch he's really been affected with is in his left jab. Most of the wide punches, is, you know, Gomez is picking them off and catching them on the side. But his left jab has been very consistent. Sometimes Cotto will switch to a southpaw stance. And he's been surprisingly effective with it, particularly against Zab Judah. And he wobbles Gomez with a left hook to the body. The trademark punch of Miguel Cotto. That almost looked like a jab to me. Lamar, move, see, he's putting in the jab, he's putting in the jab, move, move, to the right and move, move your head, because he's coming in with the jab, he's hitting with the jab, he's catching with the jab, keep your hands up now, as soon as he puts it in, you throw yours, but well, come on, immediately, come on, breathe, 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 Keep your defense up. Keep your defense up, especially when you come in. Yeah, work, work. Come on. He, he has no resistance at the body. CompuBox numbers in round one. It was all Miguel Cotto. 27 out of 63, including 13 out of 32 jabs. Gomez showed his medal, landing 12 out of 55 punches, but none with the kind of authority that Cotto was able to demonstrate. Good body shot with the right hand this time by Cotto. 
And you heard Alfonso Gomez Sr. saying to his son between rounds, you've got to stop his jab. You've got to counter with your own jab as soon as he throws it. Him up, him up. Gomez came out of the Contender Series with a reputation as a brawler, primarily because the edited highlights in those shows showed him brawling. But he really has skills. He's really a boxer puncher. He threw 37 jabs around against Gaddy, but he's just getting beaten to the punch here. And getting moved by the punches yeah, with was, which he's I hit. I want to say, Gomez fights with his legs so far apart that he has, has very bad balance, and so it's easy for him to get knocked off balance, so to say, because his legs are so far apart. When you look at the marks already on Gomez's face, it suggests to you the authority with which Cotto is landing out there. Yeah, Cotto's had a lot of punches. And most effective that hard, stiff left jab, though, that he's landing. Good left hook to the body again by Miguel Cotto. Gomez, Gomez keeps his right hand to the side of his face, and as a result, Cotto is just having a picnic going right through the center. Well, why has he turned southpaw? I think he just feels really comfortable in this fight. He just seems to be very relaxed and just having fun out there. I never saw him so confident and, and, uh, and relaxed. I mean, Gomez is no slouch. And Cotto's treating this like a sparring session, Emmanuel. Yeah, because I don't think he feels that Gomez can punch hurt him with any, enough punching power. Knocking out boxes. So Cotto is superior in every department in this fight. It's for speed, boxing, uh, power, body punching, head punches, experience, everything. Everything favors him. It's, what it's fun to envision what Cotto might do against Antonio Margarito and what Margarito might do against Cotto. That will be a candidate for fight of the year. That's going to be a rough fight because, you know, one thing we know, Cotto does get hurt. So, and he, but the one thing, he gets up and he fights. Margarito very seldom even gets hurt. Well, this is a knockdown of Gomez. Gomez looked at the referee as if to say, he didn't hit me with a punch, I just fell. But the bottom line is, with as much leather as Cotto has landed so far, you'd be hard-pressed not to call it a knockdown. Yeah, it didn't look like a clean punch at all, that he was off balance. Well, he's going to be off balance all night the way he fights. He's on his heels and his legs are too far apart. Our replay is going to show you that Cotto got credit for a knockdown without landing his punch. But I saw That's Mike it. Tyson get credit for a knockout against Carl The Truth Williams without ever landing a punch. Williams just fell down three times. That was a brilliant round for Cotto. Huge. Breathe deeply now. Come on, breathe it and hold it. Very nice. Come on, measure him. Put him in. Use your jab. Use your jab. Use your jab and throw strongly. But come on, move, move and throw. Don't tell me okay. Do it. Move it to side to side. Here you see, Cotto lands the right hand, and then he throws the left hand and misses. But just because of the feet getting entangled, and probably the fact that Gomez has such bad balance, it was actually ruled as a knockdown. Left feet. Copy box numbers. Good news for Gomez. He landed 22 of 76 total punches. Bad news for Gomez. Cotto landed 32 of 79. And Cotto is landing the harder shots. Gomez had never been down in a professional fight. And, of course, that is a questionable knockdown. Yeah, still hasn't been down from contact, but he has absorbed a lot of punishment in the first two rounds against Miguel Cotto. Gomez trying for more head movement now, trying to provide a more elusive target. Momentarily stops the onslaught by doing so. Cotto switches southpaw. I find myself wondering what happens if he lands one of those right hands. Cotto switches back to regulation. Well, the fact that Gomez is not considered as a puncher is probably one of the reasons he's so comfortable doing that. Cut snaps Gomez's head up. Cotto's arrogance is continuing to flow. 
Good right hand inside by Gomez, countering. He saw himself as the counterpuncher in the fight. If you get a look at Alfonso Gomez's features between rounds, though, you will see that slowly, inexorably, Miguel Cotto is rearranging his face. Right hand lands for Cotto. Left hook lands for Cotto inside. Back to the southpaw stance. Lands a straight left hand. Back to the regular stance. Gomez lands a right hand, but not with the kind of power with which he's been absorbing punches. Alfonso got in the left hook to the body, too, but look at that combination. Cotto being Cotto. Emmanuel, is Cotto too casual about this? Well, I think he's still... You know, he, he's okay because the fact that Gomez is not a big puncher. And he can hit Gomez anytime he wants it. He punches to the inside. If you notice, Gomez keeps his right hand on the side of his face, but he's wide open for left uppercuts, jabs, or anything through the center. Well, he's fallen in love a little bit with the idea of doing more boxing since the Mosley fight. be the end. That was a left hook. Oh, Body shots like that are very difficult to weather. Now, that's a real knockdown. And that's the end of round three. And it has been a full-scale annihilation so far. How you feeling, all right? You want to fight? Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Sure? You okay? All right, we're going to watch you closely, all right? You're taking a lot of shots, okay? Yeah. Oh, show you have to do is move. Cotto is showing that when he boxes, that those big punches can be really telling there you say Cotto lands a left uppercut right in the solar plexus normally his best body shot is a left hook to the ribs but due to the fact that Gomez keeps his hands on the side so much he changed up and brought it right up through the center the most painful punch you can receive is a punch to the solar plexus if you're a layman relatively new to watching boxing you've gotten two clear indications tonight of how damaging body punches can be the two most devastating blows of the evening have been body shots despite a lot of heavy leather landed upstairs. Harold, how do you have it through three? It's a, a very obvious three to nothing. 30 to 25, Miguel Cotto. Give him an extra point for the knockdown in round two. Give him an extra point for the knockdown in round three. Jim, one thing very interesting. You can't be saved by the bell in any round. In that round, Alfonso Gomez went down. The bell rang. He had to get up. If he didn't get up, I mean, you know, the bell can't save you. Randy Newman would have captured him out after the bell. Three to nothing, Miguel Cotto. Cotto came out in this round as though he wanted to test just how hurt Gomez is and whether he can get him out of here. Once again, to emphasize a point that Larry made in round two, Alfonso Gomez had never been knocked down and has never been knocked out in his professional career. And this despite the fact that in the Contender Series three years ago, he was fighting fighters who were naturally 10, 12, 15 pounds bigger than him. He's, and he's won 14, or he has uh, hasn't lo has lost just once in his last 15 fights. So he is a fighter who has shown great improvement and would be a decent fighter against a lot of good fighters. Well, this is reminiscent of what Cotto did to Carlos Quintana here in Atlantic City a year and a half ago. Quintana, who now has a title belt, a very skilled fighter, a guy who beat... An outstanding young puncher from South America named Joel Julio. And Cotto annihilated him with body shots. You think Cintron could fight Gomez? Yeah, I mean, they, could, they could fight. But, 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 yeah, they would be a good fight. But really, right now, it's so much excitement in the top echelon of the runaway division. Especially right now, looking at a fight between Cotto and Margarita is going to be phenomenal in a lot of ways. If 
Gomez is standing toe to toe fighting, but he's like in some of the 22 rifle compared to somebody with a real big powerful shotgun. He just he doesn't have the power to stand in there and then trade with Joe Cole. No. Is Gomez showing he too much courage, Emmanuel, or, yes. is, or does he have no choice? I is think he, his corner's going to have to stop this fight because he's not the type of guy to He's getting him. hurt badly. This is the kind of stuff that affects your career. Yeah, and he doesn't have enough power to it. There's no uh, way and, and, and he's just being beaten to the punch I'm consistently. I'm gonna, I'm gonna punch. Get up. said it many times, Miguel Cota doesn't just beat you. He beats you up. Three fighters among his last eight opponents have not fought again. Throw everything you have. Throw everything you have. Please, stand correctly. Come on, no round punches. Throw straight. With everything you have. Move side to side and your hands up. Cover yourself. Come on, you tired? Very tired? I would do it off all right? Listen, one more round, okay? You really get hit with a lot of shots. I'm concerned, all right? You better make something happen, okay? We're going to stop this fight, all right? Come on, son, the only thing you have to do, you have to do is stand there. He's standing there. Just stay there. Throw everything you have. Uppercuts, hooks, everything. Uppercuts, hooks. Uppercuts, hooks. That's all. Come on, throw everything. You heard the ring doctor tell Gomez that if he didn't start to do more, he would have to stop the fight. I'm wondering if Larry Hazard the recently deposed commissioner of the New Jersey State Athletic Commission. We're here tonight. If he might not have already stopped this fight. Our, our Alfonso Gomez took 60 punches from Miguel Cotto in round four. 60 punches from some fighters might not be enough to seriously damage him. 60 punches from Miguel Cotto in one round is something that should never happen in your life. I, was, I saw the doctor also tell the referee Randy Newman that, you know, keep his eyes open and if he, he decides to stop it, he would justify it. And in fact, Randy Newman, before the fight, Jeff Wall, who is the head of the contender who, who promotes Gomez, was concerned about him letting the fighter get hurt because the last fight, when Gomez fought here, Larry Hazard actually jumped in the ring himself and stopped the fights to keep him from hurting when he was fighting with uh, Arturo Getty. And so uh, Jeff Wall was concerned about that and it was considering to have Randy Newman a request for him to be replaced. Well, it's very wise of Wald, who sometimes oversells his fighters. Well, he realized that something like this could happen, and he said he was very concerned that Randy may possibly be a little slow in stopping the fight in case Gomez got hurt. Gomez is trying to get inside now and do some damage to the body he's fighting gamely yeah and it it was his father Alfonso Gomez senior who asked him between rounds just go out and throw everything and that would seem to be an unwise tack to take down goes Gomez for the third time in the fight he's a shell of the person who came into the ring and you wonder how much more Evidence yeah. they need. Randy Newman looked at the ringside doctor there. Well, it wasn't a big shot that knocked him down. It was a jab. When you have a fighter that's being outclassed like this, and he's a good puncher, you still say there's hope because he can maybe turn everything around with one single punch. But when Gomez, who's not a puncher, is taking this type of a beating, you have to really seriously consider thinking about it. Yeah, he's not really stopping. getting any respect from Cotto. No, he has no power. So it's going to be hard for him to turn this fight around with one single punch. Part of Gomez's rationale for how he would beat Cotto was, well, we've all seen that Miguel has a weak chin. You know, actually, Ricardo Torres knocked him down, and Demarcus Corley wobbled him with a headshot. Cotto's camp points out those mishaps took place when Cotto was starching himself to make 140 pounds, when he was really battling weight to try to get down to 140. It hasn't happened in the 147-pound weight class.
When, when Art Aragon was once told by... A, you're reading all his jabs. Come on, move to the side like this. Come on, you're not moving. You're not moving at all. You're not moving. You're not moving at all. That's why he's catching you with all the jabs. I think we're going to stop this fight. You get, you get, uh, Come on, Doc. Give one round. I think that's it. The doctor's going to stop the fight. We're done. There will be no round six. Miguel Cotto will have a technical knockout victory. I believe, at least, we heard the doctor say that. And now Randy Newman officially acknowledges that it's over. I just want to say that when Art Aragon was told by a referee that he made up to stop the fight if something didn't happen, he responded, what's holding you back? <laughs> This was a good doctor stoppage, right, Emmanuel? It was a very good stoppage. It, was, it could have been stopped around so even. Well, and, uh, we made the point that the knockdown in round five didn't come on a big punch. And that's often an indication that the yeah. fighter who goes down is done. It he, was a yeah. jab. It was just a, certainly a simple hard jab, and he couldn't even handle that because he just combination of being tired, outclassed, bad balance, and just thoroughly beaten. So he was allowed to finish the round from that point forward, but an intelligent stoppage between rounds by the doctor. Miguel Cotto has win number 32, knockout number 27, and a landslide victory over Alfonso Gomez. Let's go to ring announcer Lupe Contreras for the particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, under the advice of the ringside physician, referee Randy Newman stops about before the start of round number six. Your winner, by way of technical knockout and still, the WBA welterweight champion of the world, the Canguas, Puerto Rico, Miguel Angel. Goto. Congratulations from Sammy Sosa to Miguel Cotto. Final copy box numbers, a landslide. Cotto lands 125 more punches, an average of 21 more landed punches per round. Throws 53 more punches. Lands at a 51% connect percentage while allowing Gomez to touch him only 20% of the time. Power shots, bigger margin. Cotto landing 125 to 46. That's a difference of 79. Throws 70 more. Lands at a 59% connect percentage for power shots. That's brutal. If, if he were an average hitter, that would hurt. He's a big hitter. It hurts a lot. Larry Merchant stands by with Miguel Cotto. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Miguel. Are we seeing a slightly different fighter, a fighter who wants to box a little bit more and pick his spots rather than just try to overwhelm his opponents? No, I try to, to do everything in the fight, you know, move, punch, put pressure, and I think everything, everything running pretty good. Did you know right away that you were too fast for him with your punches? I think that the, my job is... Uh, in the last three fights, it's, uh, that, that was the difference, you know? That was the difference who made, that, who made me fight better, who made me uh, a better boxing than, than them. Did you see the first fight, and what was your view of it? I, I didn't see too much of, of the first fight, but I, I'm, I'm ready for, for the guy uh, who my company put in front of me. If, if Margarito on, on, on July, I'm going ready for him. What happens when Margarito presses the action against you the way he did tonight against Cintron. I'm going to prepare for everything. I'm always prepared for everything and I show this in this opportunity. Uh, Gomez put pressure on me. I put pressure on Gomez. I'm back a little bit. You know, I, I, can, I can do more, with, more than one thing. It's very noticeable that you do not call out Mayweather. You let everybody else call him out for you. Is that what you think is the right way eventually to get a fight with Mayweather? I'm, I'm not. I, I can promote my career, you know. I'm not my manager. I'm not my promoter. I'm just a boxer. Mayweather, 
if, if, he, if he had to fight with me, he had to fight me. If he want to fight me, I, I, I'm agree with that. You know, I, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not scared of anybody. Thank you. Congratulations again, Miguel. Thank you. Jim? All right. Thank you very much, Larry Merchant, Emmanuel Stewart. Another brilliant performance for Miguel Cotto. Shall we say that he continues to improve, or was the level of opposition such that it's difficult to say whether that's a step up from what he did against Shane Mosley? Uh, it was just a day's work job he just did tonight. He just went through the motions. It really wasn't much more than a sparring match. But it was very interesting. The fight that everybody wants to see, as Larry said, is him and Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather doesn't want to talk about fighting Cotto. And Cotto, surprisingly to me, doesn't speak up strongly enough himself. Bob Arum, his promoter, speaks up. But I think that if Cotto would speak up very strongly and just call Floyd out, call him a couple of nasty names, that fight could be made. But he seems to be reluctant to do that himself. Well, by focusing on the possibility of Cotto Mayweather, though, we may be uh, playing into the hands of Antonio Margarito and perhaps uh -huh. disrespecting him a little bit because now we look at the probability, it seems, of Antonio Margarito against Miguel Cotto on July 26. Now, yeah, I'm going to show you a piece of video that, that demonstrates the kind of guy Margarito is. And this is after your brave fighter, Kermit Cintron, goes down at the end of the fight. Look at what our corner camera captured as Margarito waited in a neutral corner after that brilliant body shot that finished the fight against Cintron. Here's Antonio Margarito yelling at Cintron to get up so that he can hit him again. Well, I know Bob Arum just hollered down and asked me, who do I pick between Margarito and Cotto? I say the most talent is Cotto, but you, when you have a guy that can take a punch the way that uh, Margarito and a physically big guy at 5 feet 11, that means that's going to be a tough, tough fight. Cotto has a edge and skills, but it's going to be a hell of a fight. Antonio Margarito is all man, and incidentally, July 26 is the date, and I'm ready to pick a winner. The fans, boxing fans are the winners when Margarito fights Cotto. Larry Merchant, uh, you mentioned uh, in your discussion with Cotto in the ring afterward the possibility of a fight with Floyd Mayweather. How much closer is he to the prospect of that potential matchup? Well, he's about an hour closer than he was before the, before the fight, Jim. I kind of disagree with Emmanuel. I think he's better off letting everybody else in the world call Mayweather out for him. Wherever I go, on both coasts, people who recognize me say, when are they going to fight? Or is Mayweather really afraid of Cotto? Is he ducking him? If you want the answer, let's go back to the interview I did with Floyd Mayweather after he defeated Ricky Hatton last year. The best fighters have always taken on all the challenges out there. Well, you, well. Like a, like a Cotto or a Vernon Forrest or a Winky Wright, whoever is out there so that you can do your thing. I've done what I had to do in the sport. Six-time world champion, five different weight class. 20 championship fights. I, I fought the best from all over the world, from Delahoy to Ricky Hatton, and the list goes on and on. I have nothing else to prove to the world. I, I, like I said before, I'm not going to let boxing retire me. I'm going to retire from boxing. Translation? Jim, what he's really saying there is that unlike other fighters who, as they get older, become more vulnerable, they use their names to get fights and keep going, as we've seen recently, and we'll see again uh, next week with uh, Hopkins and Calzaghe that he feels that he's made enough money to walk away. He's not going to hang around long enough for a young lion like Cotto to beat him. That said, I think there'll eventually be a fight probably next year. All right. Well, boxing fans will be the winners if that takes place as well. And you were the winners tonight. If you like violence, it lives in boxing's welterweight division. Two of the most violent fighters in the world won tonight. Antonio Margarito and Miguel Cotto. And with good fortune for all of us, they may be violently matched against each other July 26th of this year. Meanwhile, thanks very much for being with us on this edition of HBO's World Championship Boxing. Next on HBO, countdown to Hopkins Kalzaki. Both men are longtime champions. Hopkins has a middleweight, Kalzaki at super middleweight. Follow them now as they train for their showdown for light heavyweight superiority. And on April 19, live on HBO, it's the live fight. Bernard Hopkins against Joe Kalzaki. Kalzaki's first time fighting in America, a must-see matchup. And don't forget May 3, also live on HBO.
Oscar De La Hoya against Steve Forbes. Oscar's first live fight on the network in seven years. If you missed any part of tonight's show, you can catch it again on HBO tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. or on HBO 2 at 4.30 p.m. Tonight's installment of World Championship Boxing will be rebroadcast a final time, also on HBO 2, Tuesday night at 11.40. So now for our entire HBO crew, I'm Jim Lampley, saying so long from Atlantic City, New Jersey. This has been a presentation of HBO Sports.